Hello everyone, this is Sani and you guys are watching Coding with Sani. In this video, I'm going to introduce you guys with the basic structure of Android Studio ID. You are going to develop Android application for the very first time. So this video would be very helpful for you guys to understand the basic structure of Android Studio that how to create a project inside Android Studio and what are different options that you will be using inside your Android Studio. So let's get started. So when you first time run the Android application, you will come across this window, which is the basic window when you run the Android Studio. This is the list of projects that you have recently created. If you have not created any project, there would be no project at all. Now, if you want to start a new project, then you have to click on this option. If you want to open an existing Android project, then you have to click on this option. I'm going to come back to these options in a while. Next thing is Android Studio Project Version Control. This option is used to keep track of your software version control. Android Studio supports several kinds of version control, such as you can use GitHub, CVN, CVS, and Google Cloud to keep track of different versions of your Android project. So you can check one of these options from here if you want to set up a version control for your application so i will explain to you guys that how you can set up a version control for your project in coming videos next thing is profile or debug apk android studio 3.0 and higher allows you to profile and debug apks without building them from the android studio project suppose that you have some kind of api stored at your hard drive then you want to debug that API into your Android Studio, then you can use this option to debug that API. Simply click on it and after that choose that where you have stored that APK file. But to profile and debug APK, you have to make sure that APK file you are going to debug should have debugging enabled with it. The next thing is import project Gradle if you want to import some other project or Gradle from the different IDEs then you can import from here if you want to import the android code samples you can click over here and import those code samples into your project next thing is you can choose android virtual device manager software development kit setting plugin and other features from here as well if you want to check that that you have latest android studio version installed on your machine then you should click on check for update option from here okay so this was a little introduction of the very first screen that comes on when you click on Android Studio icon. Now I'm going to create a sample project to show you guys with the different options that comes with the Android Studio. First, if you want to create a new project, just click on this option and you will come up with this screen. So these are different type of activities that you can use to develop your Android application. But before that, let me explain that what does it mean by an activity. An activity is an application component that provides a screen with which user can interact. Whenever you click on the icon of your application to start, the screen that comes onto your mobile phone is an activity. User can interact with an activity to do something such as to send message, to take photos, to have chat with someone, or to view a map. When you create an activity, it uses three different kind of files: an XML layout file for the front end and a Java class file for the backend and Android manifest file to keep record of all the activities that exist in an application. So these are different kind of activities. This is a simple activity. This can also be an activity and this can also be an activity. So what are these other options? Wear OS, Android TV, Android Auto or Android Thing. I'm going to explain one by one these options. You all are already familiar with the phone and tablet but what are wear os android wear apps are those apps that runs directly on the watches it gives you access to hardware such as sensor and the gpu wearable apps are similar to other apps that use the android sdk but differ in design and functionality all the rest watches that comes with the android operating system if you want to develop application for those, you can choose the activities which are just screens from here. Select any one of these and start developing applications for them. This is another example of wristwatches that you can use to develop the application. The next thing is Android TV. Android TV 
is actually a platform to develop applications for large screen devices such as high definition television. TV apps use the same structure as those for the phone and tablet. You can create applications for those TV devices on which Android operating system runs. However, user interaction model for TV is substantially different from phone and tablet devices. So if you want to create an Android application for a TV device with the Android operating system, then you should choose an activity Android TV activity from here and then start a developing application. There are different type of television devices that comes with the Android operating system installed on them. You can choose Android TV from the Android Studio to start developing application for them. Next option is Android Auto. Android Auto actually lets you to develop application for the Android Automotive operating system. All the vehicles with the Android Automotive operating system can use the application develop in Android Auto in Android Studio IDE. So if you are going to develop application for, for a device with Android Automotive operating system, then you should choose one of these options from here and start developing applications. It can be an application for GPS, for tracking, for sound system and whatever devices Android Automotive system supports. Next option is Android Things. Android Things actually lets you experiment with the building smart and connected device applications, such as applications for the embedded operating system platform by the Google. The main purpose of introducing the Android Things was to use these applications with low power and memory constrained IoT devices. If you want to develop application for those kind of peripheral devices, then you should select the Android thing option from here and start developing application. So these were different options for which you can develop different kind of application. So now I'm going to select phone and tablet from here and selecting app activity. Press next. Next you have to select the name for your application. Let me select it. Let me select the name. I'm going to name Android ID app. Simple name you can have whatever the name you want to select. Next thing is package name. Package name is one of the most important thing while developing the application. You should clearly define when you are going to develop the application. When you are testing the application or developing for some class product, then it does not matter. But when you are going to develop application professionally, then package name is going to play a big role. When you will be deploy your application on Google Play Store, this application name should be unique. Otherwise, Google Play Store would not let you to upload application on the Play Store. Okay, so be very careful while defining the package name for your application. It should be like first you have to provide the com, then followed by the dot and the domain name, and after that, and that application name will be used as next name of your package. Then you can choose the location from here. Android Studio support two type of languages for backend development, that is Java and Kotlin. You can use either one of these languages to develop the application. Next thing is minimum API level. Basically, API level is the Android operating system version. Here, by defining the API level, you choose that will be the minimum API level or what will be the minimum Android version on which your application will run. Okay, like I have choose API level 22, it means my application will run approximately over 80% devices. Next option is this project will support instant app. Instant app is actually is a small software program that enables the end user to test out a particular portion of Android app without installing it on the devices. So if you want this option to be available with your application, you should check this option while creating your project. Now I'm going to click finish. It will start developing our application. When your application will be built and synced, this is going to be the screen that comes on to your laptop so you can move around by holding these sliders and let me first minimize this now i'm going to close this all of these things so that i can introduce you guys with different options so this would be the screen that actually comes when you first create your project here i'm just going to explain the basic feature of this ide so that you can get started and later on you can get familiar with the other option when you will start developing applications when you create the application it comes up with three different kind of resources if you want to open those resources just click on this project or just press alt plus one and this, this window will be opened there are two folder one is cradle script and other one is app folder 
when you click the app folder you come up with the three different kind of files one is manifest file other one is java file and next is resources let me discuss these one by one if we expand this android manifest file opens android manifest file basically is the most important file in your project how because it keep record of all the activities that are being used inside your application at the same time it have the other options such as hello backup icon label of your application then icons left to right support theme and intent filter options i'm not going to explain these options right now i will be explaining these option when i will going to explain the android manifest file so for the time being just remember this is the most important file with without this file there is would be no apk file built by the android gradle so for the backend functionality android studio use the java language if you want to work on the backend file you have to expand this folder just leave the android test and test right now just click expand this folder and this is the main activity a java class which will be used for the backend functionality of your application if you want to add on click or search buttons or if you want something to happen when you click on the button then you should write that code into this file this would be the backend file for your activity next thing is resources when you open the resources folder it comes four different folders one is tribal folder next is layout folder and map map folder and values Tribal folder is basically used to store all kinds of images that will be used inside your application. A layout folder contains the layout of your application. If you want to start developing your application, this would be the file in which you will be going to drag and drop different kind of buttons, image views, or layout list and things like that. So this would be the file where you will actually design your UI. Now, what is this map map folder? This folder is used to store the all kind of icons that will be used inside your application. Next thing is values. Android Studio is basically follows the MVC model view controller pattern by default, in which the developers have separate everything into different files. Like you have, if you are going to work on the backend, then you have to work in Java. If you are going to front end of an activity, then you should have to work on activity. If you are going to work with the colors or strings that will be used in your application, then all the colors will be defined inside color files and the strings that would be used throughout the application will be defined in string file and styles that are actually different kind of themes which you are going to use in your application will be defined inside style file. Okay. Now let's talk about Gradle. Gradle script is actually a build environment which, which use the groovy script that merge all the resources from manifest file java file and resources folder into a single apk file that can run onto your mobile phone so if i open one of these files which is build.grabble file here you can add the dependencies that you are going to use inside your application at the same time you can change the compiled version for your SDK and different things. But that is not the topic of this video, so I will be explaining in coming videos. Now, let's talk about how to run the application. So there are two different options. By using those options, you can run your application. One is you can run your application on your physical device. Otherwise, you can create Android virtual device to run your application. If you want to create a virtual device with your Android Studio, open EVT Manager and from here you can choose create virtual device and after that select one of these devices then click next okay download these one of option and after that click next and your Android virtual device will be created as I have already created two virtual devices one is Nexus 5 APK 29 and Pixel 3x APK 29. Now, if you want to build your project, just click on build. From here, you can clean project, rebuild project, and build APK files. In the tools, you can use the AVD manager, which is actually Android Virtual Manager, SDK Manager, which is used to manage the software development kit for Android Studio, layout, layout inspectors, Firebase plugin, Groovy console, and Kotlin plugin. You can choose all these options from here. If you want to run the application, just click 
first choose the application from here and then click on this run button if you want to debug the application just click on this icon it will start debugging your application when you first time run your application if you want to sync your gradle with the android studio or with your project just click on this icon over here to change the settings of your android studio just go to file and click on settings or simply press ctrl alt s and an option will be open from here you can change different kind of options like if you want to change the appearance you can click on appearance and from here you can change the theme three different type of themes are available you can choose either one of them for menu and toolbars you can choose from here if you want to set the editor option just like color schemes code styles fonts and things like that you can select the editor want to add and remove plugin just click on plugin version for version control you can choose option from here and these are different options that you can use i'm not going to explain these options because these are not part of this video so i'm just explaining the android ide so that you can just get started with and know the basic structure and where to open the java files and xml files and what is the purpose of different resources files and value files okay so that's the basic introduction of our android studio so if you find any query or question related to android id you can ask into comment box so that's it for this video see you guys in the coming videos